Your Excellency, Mr. Howard Goodman, Ambassador of the United States of America in Belgium. It's a big honor and above all a big pleasure to welcome you in our school. Our school and its students, all these young people who cannot stop looking at you. Morocco, Pakistan, Algeria, United Kingdom, Italy, Rwanda, Romania, Congo, Canada, Macedonia, Iran, Lebanon, Kosovo, Israel, and finally, Belgium. All, without any exception, are home here. Welcome to Serge Creuse, Mr. Ambassador. But also, welcome to Molenbeek. Welcome to Brussels. Welcome in our school. And for today, welcome in your school. Yes, you are home here. Because Serge Creuse is, in some, in some small way, a bit like the United States. Students coming from different parts of the world, with different cultures, are joined us here in this school. They, they live together, respect each other, and the differences make them even richer. Every day, this mixity allows our school to grow. And it is the same mixity, Mr. Ambassador, that builds your country. Okay, the floor is yours, Mr. Ambassador. In my first eight months in Belgium as the U.S. Ambassador, I have not been a stranger to this high school, to recent first-generation, second-generation immigrant communities, to the Muslim communities in Belgium, or to Molenbeek. Why are we spending so much time together? I have given talks to universities at Leuven and Levain. I've given a speech to thousands of Belgians in front of the King and the Prime Minister for Father Damien. I've given speeches to the Harvard Club and the Yale Club. And yet, without a doubt, today, to you, is one of the most important talks and speeches I will give in Belgium, or I have given in Belgium. So the question arises, how could that be true? Why is uh, a talk to a multicultural group of high school students among the most important audiences for a busy ambassador from the United States? And the answer to both these questions, why we're spending so much time together, and why you, in fact, are the most important audience, is that together we are building the future. And together we are building the future for the entire world. Um, because for far too long, my generation has built a world with too much distrust between people of different backgrounds, too much distrust between people of different nationalities, too much distrust between East and West. And that distrust and that misunderstanding has sometimes bred violence. That violence has sometimes bred war. And in any event, it's led to prosperity for very few. Not a real good picture. In some countries today, people are making judgments about people in other countries that they have never met or spoken to. In other countries, people are making judgments about their neighbors who they see every day based solely on their name or their look or their ethnic background. Surely we can do better. How can we not do better? This group has a unique opportunity to build a more peaceful and prosperous future, one based on our shared brotherhood, on truly our shared values and on our shared hopes for the future. Now, does this group really have that unique opportunity? Or does this guy go around and say that to everyone? Here is where the hope lies. You are, in fact, the true ambassadors. Everyone in this room is the true ambassador, far more than me. Because you come from communities I can't reach, 
You deal with communities I can only reach by asking people to drive me to them and then hoping they can believe my sincerity. But by your actions daily, by your words daily, you have a far greater ability to build that more peaceful and more prosperous future for all of us, including me. You don't have to be Barack Obama to build that better world, but you have to participate. You have to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Every one of us has choices. You're sitting there right now with them. We can either be part of the problem or part of the solution. And we all know the story of a black kid born into a country where people would tell him to move to the back of the bus or not use the men's room. We know that guy well. We know he grew up without a dad and he was often raised by his grandparents. We know that boy studied hard, became a law professor, and we know he understood people. And when he speaks, he can inspire people of all races, of all creeds, and all colors. So is the next Barack Obama in this room. How can't he be? How can she be? And Belgium offers free university. You can go to Leuven or Leuven de Neuve, or you can go to Kortzik, or you can go to Nemer, you can go to wonderful schools for free just by trying. So while you go, don't hesitate to wash some dishes or make some waffles. Because while you're washing dishes or making some waffles, you'll be walking into the future. So I have no doubt the next Barack Obama is in this room. And that's exactly why this is the most important audience I can speak to. Thanks so much and all the best.